this morning, I would like to share something very briefly about desperation or despair. Now, many a time, we have not escaped this particular word called despair or desperation. Now, let me just give you an illustration of a person that I know many years ago in a former church. Now, he was a good businessman. He was very successful. And every time that we invite him to church, he says, no time faster. All right? You must understand, I'm a businessman. Uh, you know, I, 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 I'm in the world. You know, I have do a lot of business. And so I've been engaged on Sundays with my clients. I have no time. And so we say, okay, no time for Sunday worship, what about Bible study, what about prayer meeting, and I'm saying no time. Every now and then when we check with him and we go to his house, his family used to come, but he never made it. So the reason was no time. All right, so every time that we say no time. Now normally, being knowing the Lord, and once you know the Lord and you begin to give no time, all right, then God will fix a fix to fix you up. And here you are, this businessman, suddenly one day, he appeared in a church. He was drawn looking, worried, upset. All right, so we went through the worship service and then he specifically wanted to see me. And he was in a state of desperation. He was in a state of desperation where he went for his medical checkup and he found that he had a, some terminal growth, which is on a third stage. And now suddenly, a man had no time for church, no time for Bible study, no time for prayer meeting, no time for God, and finally, he has time to come to God. Because he has come into a situation called desperation. Right? He's in desperation, all right, because doctors have said, you are the third stage, it is beyond our help. And so, desperation sets in. When desperation stays in, right, this man found the right place to come, all right, to church and to find God. Now this morning, we're going to see about desperation where none of us have ever escaped from desperation. And one man is taught from the scripture, that is David. In Psalms 57, of the first 11 verses that we're, going to, we're not going to read it, but if you read this 11, 11 verses, there are one or two verses we're going to pick up. Now, David was in a desperate situation. Dangers were lurks right at his corner. Right? And David was in total desperation, running away from Saul. Now, you know what the story about Saul and David. Now, when David wrote this psalm, he was the commander of the army of Israel. And there you are, every time when King Saul was appointed by God, all right, in the first king of Israel, what happened was that he, every time for, after a war, they come back, all right? People would be arousing, welcome them, and they said, King Saul, you killed 1,000 men. And King David, I mean, David, you killed 10,000 men. Now this prompted fear into King Saul. And King Saul worked in two areas. He was jealous and he was threatened that one day David will take over his kingship. Now, King Saul forgot his appointment and his proclamation and he was made king by God himself, not by any man. All right, it is God who appointed, God will remove. But this man became so emotional that when he heard that people in jubilant crowd saying, Saul, you killed 1,000, and David kills 10,000, made him upset, jealous, and threatened for his position as the king. And so he started to go after the life of David. And David ran. All right, in the nighttime, David were going through uh, his journey. And daytime, he was hiding in caves. A man who should be living in his society a man who should be living with his family, a man should be living with his, all his relatives and friends, a man who should be freely moving about, now he is in a total desperation, and there he was hiding in caves in daytime, and at night time he was traveling. That was the situation that he was. And there were 
He was running away from the severity of the dangers that was lurking. Now let's look at verse 4 of Psalm 57. We will see the dangers that he was in. Look at verse 4. He says, My soul is among lions, and I must lie among those who breathe from the from the fire, even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongues a sharp sword. That's the situation. They were after the life of David. They were given orders to kill David. He raised him out so that Saul will be comfortable. So Saul will be secure in his position as a king. And that was the desperation that David was. David was young, bright, brilliant, clever, and yet that man was on the run. And so how did David overcome his desperation? That's what I'm going to talk about this morning. How did he overcome his desperation? How was his desperation set into him? My friends, let me tell you this. When desperation sets into our life, we tend to run to people. We tend to run to people or we tend to run into isolation. We tend to run into withdrawal. We tend to run into total cut off from the society so that you will wallow into your own desperation and that desperation will take you to hell. Let me tell you this. Desperation or despair is your number one enemy. Not the outside. Whatever the dangers is lurks outside. It's not that. What is actual dangers is your own desperation. Your own desperation will kill you. Your own desperation will destroy you. And that's what it was. Now all Christians, once in your lifetime, you must get this book. I think we have it in our library. The book called The Pilgrim Progress by John Bunyan. And this book is said to be next to the Bible. All right. So in the lifetime of a Christian lifetime, hope. We all can read this book and will be one of the best book. All right. And we just been world Christians have proclaimed this is one of the book which is next to the scriptures. All right. And the title of the book called Pilgrim Progress by John Bunyan. Now here he tells a story. At one stage, Mr. Christian and Mr. Hope. And they were languishing in the dark cell called the Doubting Castle. And that castle is owned by Mr. Despair. All right. So Mr. Christian and Mr. Hope, this is the titles of each one. Right? They, they all got meaning. As I tell you, those who are carrying baggages in your life, baggages of sick, sickness, baggage of finance insufficient, sicknesses of all kinds of, of, of your, your, your in dwelling of your life, your relationships, you ought to read this book. And he says how this Mr. Christian walks to the cross with a pack full of things behind him and how that is dislodges him and he climbs the hill all right and the one of wonderful book and this way we say <clears throat> you need to read one of the books just next to the bible and here we see mr hope <clears throat> and mr christians were caught in this doubting castle and which is owned by mr despair what did mr hope and mr christian did they began to go in prayer and <clears throat> through prayer they were able to escape from that scary situation. Now this is it my friend. <clears throat> Two things. In the desperation situation. Where we all, most of us fail. <clears throat> and David is teaching us a lesson. David is teaching us a lesson. In the time of desperation. We ought to get to go, run to God. Not run away from him. Amen. And this is what we do. We run away from God when we're in this total desperation and we look for men or you go into isolation, nothing to do with the world, where some of us are. When you're in total desperation, you cut off from the whole world, <clears throat> you receive no phone calls and even you get calls, all okay, that's the word you get. All right, and this is what you say, that shows you are in a pure desperation and you're wallowed into the desperation. As I said, is your number one enemy. And David has taught us a simple lesson. When he was in total desperation, Psalms 57, 
he was in a total desperation his situation was hopeless his situation was danger any time anyone who looks at him by the <coughs> pursuing army he will be killed that was his situation all right and yet david all right we see he composes some of the uh, psalms when he escapes from this desperation and the desperation that was in him and he escaped it he ran away from it and he how did he do that he began to go in prayer <coughs> The first five verses of this chapter will tell you his prayer. And here he describes, huh? look at verse 1. Be gracious to me, O God, for my soul take refuge in you. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge until destruction passes by. <clears throat> this was his prayer. This was his plight. This was his desperation. Right, he went to the Lord and yet he gives a picture of a young bird taking shelter under the mother's wing. You know, if you see a chicken, whenever the little chicks are around and when the mother chickens find that their little chicks are being threatened, you can find the little the mother chicken will raise the wings and cover the chicks. I'm sure you have seen it. All right. And you find that those who come under that wings find refuge and escape from danger. And David constantly reminds us of this. Now let's turn to chapter 36 of Psalm. Chapter 36 of Psalm. Look at verse 7. How precious is your loving kindness, O God, and his children of men take refuge in the shadow of your wings. Again, David speaks about the shadow of your wings. How a refuge is when we run to him in a time of desperation. We run to him, all right, in the time where you're in despair, so that you can able to go under his wings and you are totally protected and you escape. All right. Another verse we're going to look at it. Chapter 17 of Psalms. All right. And underscore this verse. And those who feel hopeless right now in your life, who feel you're going down the hill, and those you feel nothing, success is coming your way. If you think that is everything of four walls you're facing. You're facing your world before you in anything, your business, your work, or anything for that matter. Verse 8 is for you, my friend. Underscore it. He says, keep me as the apple of the eye and hide me in the shadow of your wings. Keep me the apple of your eyes. Zechariah 6 tells us you are the apple of his eyes. Alright? You are precious in his eyesight. And yet you find you hide me in the shadow of your wings. Friends, David believed in the loving and the faithful God. He never trusts his men. He never ran to men. He never ran to anybody else. He ran to God. Now, my friend, it's easy to talk. In the desperation time, your mind only tells you, your mind begins to get clogged up. Your mind get a mental block. All right? And this is where, if you are continuously dwelling in the word of God, if you continuously in, in the scripture, my friend, let me tell you this. Your motivations come from the scripture. Your motivation comes from your scripture. Now, let me tell you this, 38 years in the ministry. All right, and I've heard pastors saying they go for motivation courses. Some of them call it the burned out. We have burned out, you know, in 30 years of ministry. I've heard young men saying in 20 years of ministry, past I'm burned out. All right, and I, I am totally, you know, exhausted. And I need some pump up. I need some motivation. Let me tell you this. I don't boast. I boast in the Lord. 38 years in the ministry, I've gone up and down. I've never attended a motivational course in any seminary. All right. Neither I went into some burned out. 
My motivation comes from the word of God. Every time that you may not load, I get into the scripture and I know the book of Psalms and David is one who helps me a lot. When you get into the word of God, you see the strength that you get from him. All right, reading the word of God gives you the strength, the motivation, the built up. And they push you to go. And that was my motivation. I don't need doctors. All right, in the West, all right, whenever you're going down, they run to the psychologist, they run to the psychiatrist, all right, and to get motivated up, all right, they will speak their problem, all right, they will talk. And that's all what it's all about today. All right, in Singapore, if you notice, primary three, primary four children have been referred to psychologists. All right, because of the, the pressure of their education, all right, but their parents, Christian parents, so it's scared that they never took them to prayer. All right, it's all men. But my friend David has taught us a lesson. Whenever we need help in any kind of trouble, we should train ourselves to go to God. We should discipline ourselves. All right, go to God. Prayer must be a habit in our life should be a habit in our life. All right, whenever you are down, are we able to go and shut yourself and go to the Lord in prayer like David does? All right. We see David's, he had real dangers in his life. All right, real dangers. And he's right in the mouth of a lion's mouth, that's what he says. And yet the mouth are like spears waiting to devour him. But his defense, he did not want to go into desperation, all right, and try to make things right. What he did, he went into prayer. Let me tell you this, the power of prayer, my friend. The power of prayer is not a simple thing and, and learn this morning. Just like a story, all right, I just told you last week. If you are praying for rain, all right, this pastor called, but then, and let's come for prayer, and this evening come, let's get together. Only one person brought an umbrella. Faith. All right, let's have faith. Here we are going in prayer. We are going to fasting. All right, and then we come with unfaithful word. Now or never. And I speak this with experience. I don't run to anyone when I have my struggles. I don't run to anyone to go and speak to my struggles. I say to my God. All right. And I know my God has led me through. I can write a volumes of book about it, my friend. How God has taken me out from the pit. Because when I go back to God. So my friend, David has taught us a vital lesson. All right, that when he was in a state of desperation, he went to the Lord in prayer. He went to the Lord in prayer. And the second thing, you notice two things were applied. From verses 6 to 11 of chapter 57, if you notice, he was going in praise. Imagine that. This is a display of his faith where you find a total hopeless situation. All right, here we see men are laying traps for David like an animal. All right, they are laying traps for him. And though he knew everything, he knew is utterly hopeless before his enemies. Let me repeat. David knew he's utterly hopeless before his enemies, but he had a boy on faith. He had faith in the Lord that he will see his downfall of his enemy. You know what? In verse 7 and 8, he said, Awake my soul. Let's see that. My state. My heart is steadfast, so my God is steadfast, and I will sing. Yes, I will sing. Awake my soul, awake heart and lair. I will awake the dawn. Simple as that. Imagine today when you are in a desperation, in a state where you see the whole situation around you is hopeless. All right? Our faith takes a beating. Our bed is the backside of our cars. Or is somewhere down in the house there. Our faith has gone completely. And we go into all our, into our depressions. We go into all kinds of ways to find ways. We try to put all our intelligent mind. How to get and get out of it. Simple. 
David went in the simple faith and he told the Lord, Awake my soul. And he began to worship God. And look at the entire verse. From 7 right up to 11, he says, Exalted above the heavens, O God, let your glory be above all the earth. Can you say it with a time of desperation? You may say, Pastor, I have no food to eat. Huh? I have no food to eat. I have no food to give to my family this afternoon. You want me to praise her? This is where our faith, my friend. This is how our faith takes a beating. This is how our faith goes to the backseat of our car. This is where our faith is no more longer in action. Every time we, our mind begins to work with our own wisdom, and we all must understand the wisdom of this earth is not a wisdom of God. James chapter 4, 22. James chapter 3. All right, what does it say in verse 15? The wisdom is not that comes from down. Sorry, verse 14. 16, sorry, yeah? Yes, verse 15. The wisdom is not that comes down from above, but is earthly, natural, and what? What is the third one? Demonic. My friend, the wisdom which means in your mind. Your mind becomes the worship of the workshop of the devil. As simple as that. When you're in a depth desperation, alright, your mind becomes the workshop for the devil. The, the devil takes time and says, going to desperation. I clap my hand. I'm joyful to see you in the total desperation. Be in that desperation and do stupid things. And do stupid things and get out of stupid things and you land in the stupid matters. Alright, and that's what the devil does. Because the West wisdom of yours is demonic, natural, and earthly. But in verse 16, you see, the wisdom that comes from above is pure, is gentle, is peaceable, has no hypocrisy. And that's the wisdom of God, and that's what David had. Alright, and he was in a state of, of despair. Alright, not only prayer. He went into praise. Alright, he went into praise. And because he can only do this praise because he had that faith. Let me just give you two verses in Jeremiah. In the book of Jeremiah. First we see was chapter 33. Chapter 33. We look at verse 3. What is this is? Call to me, and I will answer you not. Mm. And I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. The scripture so straightforward. Call to me, and I will answer you. Is our scriptures a liar? A book that is maintained for years and decades and centuries and centuries, which has been a number one seller until today? Do you know every three minutes in this world a Bible being sold? Do you know every three minutes a Bible has been handed down in the throughout the worldwide? We have all the records. Alright? It's one of the best published book and the highest in millions and billions have been published. Alright? And then the word of God tells us, call unto me and I will answer you. Let's turn to the 29th chapter. The 29th chapter of Jeremiah. Look at verse 12. What does it say? Then you will call upon me and come and what? Pray to me. And I will listen to you. Alright? Do we pray? Do you have a hiding place? Do you have a place where you can kneel and pray to God? And this is what the word of God says. All right, you will call upon me and come and pray to me. And I will listen to you. David knew all this, my friend. He knew the secret of touching God's heart. He knew how to get the attention of God. 
and he know how to get unto God. And you find in 57 chapter that he went in full of praise and that was faith. Without that faith, you cannot praise God. Let me tell you this. Some of us will come struggling on a Sunday morning to worship. Why? Your faith isn't there. All right, the faith isn't in Shekha now because if you have the faith, it will be bubbling inside you to worship God, my friend. He displays his faith by worship, by praise, and giving glory in a state of desperation. When he knows danger was lurking, he knew Saul's man is right behind him. One side of him, they'll finish him off. All right, and that was the situation David and David is teaching us all right, this morning that in the time of your desperation all right, what are you supposed to do as I said as a Christian I'm repeating it again as a Christian in your lifetime if you don't read this book which is next to the Bible you have lost a lot in your life all right, John Bunyan's book Pilgrim Progress get all of this book all right, and you will find one of the worthy and very, you find them, the whole world, scholars are saying that John Bunyan's book is next to the Bible. Right, we see Mr. Christian, we see Mr. Ho. What does he say? He was caught in the castle, all right, in the castle of doubt, and there Mr. Despair is the one who holds it. And the situation was so scary, they might die. But what did Mr. Hope and Mr. Christian did? They prayed. They prayed and they came out of that situation, my friend. They came out of that despair. And the same thing, all right, that we should. Whenever that we are caught in desperation, simple. Whatever your desperation may be, whatever your struggles may be, it could be anything for that matter, my friend, anything and everything in your life, be it your education, be it your work, be it your business, be it your finances, be it your relationship, be it your own struggle, be it anything that is taking you into desperation day after day. And we are losing out to the devil, all right? And we are losing and giving ourselves to the devil. But here David is teaching us that we do not have to give ourselves into the hands of the devil to be fiddled around with, all right? And he says the two things here. When you are in the state of despair, go to God in prayer. Which many of us don't do, as I said. We look for people. All right. We look for men of God. We look for pastors. We look to prophets. All right. We look to evangelists. All right. And we say that we go to them and they will help us out. But what the scripture just we read in Jeremiah 27 and 12, what does he say? Come pray unto me and I will listen to you. He never said, you come to your pastor and I will listen to your pastor. He never said, come to the prophet and the, I will listen to the prayer of prophet. He never said, come to the evangelist and I will hear the prayer of evangelist. He never said that. He said, come to me. Alright? To me. You have an access, my friend. And the Lord says, I will listen to your prayer. And so learn this. In your everyday life, in your everyday life, learn this from Pope David. In a desperation situation, go and shut yourself. Start praying. Tell what exactly. You can take this Psalm 57 to yourself, okay? Use it as an example and then go into praise. You when mean, you begin to praise in a desperation situation, the devil is shattering. Let me tell you this. When you are going in a desperation situation, a hopeless situation, where you don't see the light on the other side of the tunnel, and you begin to praise God, the devil is shattering here. You know why? Here am I, I'm giving him desperation after desperation after desperation. This fellow is going to need worshiping God. I don't want to hear that. And the scripture tells us again, he will flee from you. Amen. This is it. We have lost all this this year, my friend. Learn. In a situation when it's a dire situation, learn to go to God, not to man. All right? And pray and praise. That is the answer. I do it. All right? I don't turn to men. All right? For advice. Sorry to say that. 
Don't turn to make a counsel. My counsel come from the word of God. Is my motivator. All right, because I know the word of God. Well. So this is it. Let us learn from David this day. No despair in spite of danger. All right, no despair in spite of any need. No despair in time of your crisis. No despair when you are down to the rock bottom. No despair when you are down in your sick bed. No despair when you have no money in your pocket. No despair when you have a relationship issue. Because you go to God in prayer and in praise and pray. And this is what God is telling us this morning. Let us pray. Amen.